Hey guys, Robert 3D Printscape. So today's video is going to be covering a couple quick Cura tips and tricks. I'm going to go over some of the scaling options inside of Cura and then also talk about custom supports using the built-in features now instead of the existing plugin that I have a video covering. I've had a lot of people ask for uh, shorter videos uh, with just tips around Cura, uh, so that's what this is going to be. I'm going to also be uh, creating more of a series of these, so if there's anything specifically you want to see, just let me know. I'm still working on a firmware upgrade for uh, Marlin using the Creality touchscreen, so that's still going to be coming pretty soon. And I also just bought a Sonic pad, so I'm going to try to do some work with that as well. Alright guys, so we're here at the computer. I've got the latest version of Cura, which is uh, 521 open, and there's a couple things I want to show you as far as tips. Like I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to try to keep these videos relatively quick, only cover a couple of topics at a time. And if there's anything specific you want to see, uh, feel free to leave a comment below or message me on Discord. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is around object sizing and multiplying. So I was making a, it's like a whistle screamer um, print for my son. Uh, he was playing around with them at school. And I had to make a couple adjustments on the fan in order to get it to work properly. So let me go ahead and pull that in really quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so these things are really three different pieces. You've got your bottom, your top, and then the fan that spins here. Uh, the issue in general is with the fan. If there's any resistance at all in here, it doesn't spin. So what I found that made sense for this print, and um, the same process or pattern would be uh, common across other prints, like I did a uh, Hogwarts Tower cake topper before, and I had to adjust the percentages just by one in order to uh, get it to fit because I recommended, unless you're printers tuned perfectly uh, to make one of them a little bit large so you don't have an issue trying to align everything. Uh, so with this what I did was I changed uh, the actual size to 99% and then on the Z axis I actually went down to 86%. So you're actually able to change the scaling of individual objects on the uh, print surface uh, instead of just having them all uniform. So these two are still at 100% and this one's at 99 and 86 respectively. And then if you wanted to multiply them, you would just click on it, go to multiply selected, and let's just say I want four more copies of it. So it's gonna put in the four copies of those. I'll repeat that process here. And then I will repeat that again for the blade. And I'll link to this pattern um, in the video description below. Uh, but what I wanted to show you here is it did keep the size when it was multiplied. Uh, so if you are going to print a bunch of smaller pieces like this and you need to adjust the size, make sure you adjust it first before multiplying, unless you're going to have to go to each one of them and make the change. Also, uh, real quick, you can go to Edit, Arrange Models, and it will lay them out in what they consider to be the best um, pattern. You can also just right click and go to arrange models as well. So really this covers anytime you need to scale an object size, uh, whether it just be one object or a multiple. There's just one thing I wanted to mention really quick is if you're trying to adjust one of the axes separately from the rest, make sure you turn off uniform scaling. Unless if I was to set this to 86, it would set all of them to 86. These are just a couple quick tips uh, when using Cura that makes it a little bit more friendly. All right, the next one is going to be basically custom supports uh, without having to get additional plugins so I'm just going to delete these and I'll pull in a new overhang that I'll use for my test All right. so I've got a basic overhang test here now I know in general you don't want to print supports with it uh, but I figured it's a good test to uh, just show you what the custom supports can do uh, because it has a good overhang here uh, right. so what you want to do is just click on it go down here where it says support blocker click on that and then uh, double click on the part anywhere on the build plate and then it's going to put this block in. Uh, the block is going to be the same size every time by default. Then you'll want to select it and change the size. What I like to do first is just put it on the Z axis to get this uh, placement right. Uh, so I'll just go to move and then set the Z to zero. And then I'll move this to where I want it. So we'll just bring it over this way. And then we have to increase the size unless you want it to just be that size, but in order to cover the width of the uh, part here. Uh, so you can either uh, just go over to scaling and drag it or go to scaling and just increase the size uh, as well. 
most of the time I find it easier to drag it unless I know the size that I'm looking for offhand. And for this, it's important that you don't have uniform scaling set because it will mess it up. All right, so we'll just go ahead and drag it this way. And then you can go ahead and see that now this is larger than the part. And then we want to adjust the height so that it covers all of this and creates the support here. Um, so we'll just follow the same process. Now it is going to drag this below uh, the build plate again. Um, most of the time it does that for some reason. Uh, so you will have to readjust it, but just go ahead and drag it up to whatever size you think is good to start with. And then go ahead and set your Z positioning again. And that was not enough. So I'm gonna to wanna to make it a little bit bigger. And that covers about where I want it to be. You don't wanna to go too much over it because you're gonna have issues getting the support off. All right, but now once you have this block here, what you do is go over to per model setting and then just switch it over to support. So it's gonna print it as a support. So now if I go ahead and slice this, go over to preview and you can see it is treating it like a support. Now I know you don't wanna do this for an overhang test because it defeats the purpose of the overhang test, um, but it was a easy model to demonstrate what I was trying to show you. All right, so if you have any questions about what I covered or would like to see any other Cura tips or tricks, uh, go and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. All right, so that covers object scaling and custom supports uh, using built-in functions in Cura now. Both of them are pretty simple if you've done it a couple times, uh, but for those of you just getting started, I hope this helps out. If you'd like to see any other videos or would like to see any other tips uh, in Cura, uh, just go ahead and let me know by leaving a comment below or joining me on Discord. Thanks.